Hi, I'm Jamie. And I'm Hazera. And in this video, we'll be looking at your garden bird photos and videos, autumn moths and why you should leave your leaves. And I'll be revealing the unusual birds I saw underneath a defibrillator. We begin in a garden where many of us will have the urge to tidy. Here's our colleague Katie with a plea to leave those leaves. Autumn, a time full of colour, golden yellows, deep reds and rustic browns. Like embers, our leaves fall from our trees, creating the iconic crunch below our feet as we walk through our towns, cities and woodlands. If you have trees in your garden, or like me, have them overhanging, one of the best things you can do for wildlife is to encourage that pile of leaves to grow. Like in our woodlands, as these leaves decay, they'll create a soil nutrient called leaf mould. It is also in these piles which small mammals, amphibians and insects will seek shelter from the change of temperature. You may also see birds such as song thrush and blackbird delving into them, picking leaves one by one as they search for an easy meal. Plus, how could we forget our hedgehogs? Gathering these materials gives them that cosy winter hibernation they so badly need. So if next time you're tempted by the broom or leaf blower, just leave that pile in the garden and give nature that cosy winter sleepover. That leaf litter will be a fantastic resource for birds throughout the winter as they'll be picking their way through looking for insects and other small invertebrates that are hiding in there. We'll be returning to insects a little bit later on as Luke takes a look at autumn moths. Many of you already have plenty of birds visiting your gardens and local green spaces. Here are some examples of what you've been seeing. Claire Lampard sent us this fantastic little video of a song thrush. Now you can see it approaching the water here. It's looking to have a little drink and then a nice relaxing bath. It thinks it's got the bird bath to itself, but no, it is joined by a whole flock of other birds here um, splashing away, all benefiting from that resource that someone has kindly provided for them. Beautiful footage, isn't it? It is lovely, but it's a bit like queuing at the bar. It is. It's a very, very popular little bird bath there. So a, a good thing to uh, to remind people of, really, is that as the weather gets colder, birds are going to need fresh, clean water regularly, ice free uh, to bathe and to uh, drink from. Uh, this video of uh, red kites, uh, they're absolutely magnificent. I, I see them all the time, um, always brilliant to watch overhead as driving around uh, such brilliant birds. They are stunning and I love to count them when I'm going along. I think it's the M40. You see them soaring overhead. And actually they are uh, the birds that are the exception to the garden bird watch rule. So when you do the big garden bird watch in January, you should count birds that land in your garden, on your bird feeders or in the local green space if you haven't got a garden that you're that you're doing during, during your bird watch. But actually red kites you can still include if they're flying overhead. Interesting fact there. And the next little clip here is of a blackbird and it's hopping along the ground and it looks very much like it's feeding on some apples, doesn't it? Yes, um, they don't just eat apples, they're ground feeders. So uh, mealworms, that sort of thing are always popular. So I really love this picture of a coltit. I don't get many of them in the garden, so it's quite nice to see this one. And coltits never stay for long either, do they? They, they grab a seed and then they go. Yes, and I, I, I find it really hard to tell the difference between them and um, great tits. Yeah, I think they're smaller. I mean, that's no good me saying that when you can only see one at a time. But I think it's the behaviour as well. I think the great tits are a lot more bold um, and a lot more brightly coloured because great tits have got that kind of bright yellow with the black strap down the middle. Cold tits are slightly more muted, I think. The next little video we've got here is a woodpecker, which is always a treat to see in the garden. And it looks like it's tucking into some fat there. Now we've got some unusual bird feeders here as well. This one is a plane. It's made very creatively by Oakley Doakley, um, who showed us this on Twitter. And this is actually made from a rolling pin. What a, what a clever way of recycling an old rolling pin. Beautiful bird feeder. It is, it's lovely. Uh, it looks to me like this starling is using a, a cup um, that's been recycled for some fat balls or something to, to feed from. It's a fantastic idea in, in a way to use up chipped cups and things like that. It is a, a really nice recycling idea. And actually, I think we might return to this subject in a future video of making those lovely bird cakes that seem so popular during the winter with fat and seeds and things mixed in. What a great idea. Thank you, everyone, for sending those photos into us. And remember, you can join in with the RSPB's Breakfast Bird Watch on Twitter every weekday from 8am to 9am using the hashtag Breakfast Bird Watch. 
and a surprising number of other winged wildlife moths are around at the moment. You might remember that last week we showed you a herald moth. Well, Luke's been out and about to see what other moths you can find in autumn and winter. So moths might not necessarily be something you'd expect to see at this time of year. And we think of them as being more of a summer thing perhaps, but that's not true. And um, there's a lot of species you can find in the autumn. And uh, just last night I set my moth trap and uh, here's a few of these species I managed to catch. So here's a typical species of the time of year. This is actually a November moth, um, which is quite a regular species, as you can imagine, in November. Um, not the brightest species, but that is a common thing across autumn. They're not all bright, colourful species. They have to blend in. And here's another one that leads perfectly on from the November moth. This is the December moth. Uh, obviously, it's not quite December, but a much different moth, very chunky. And uh, we'll talk more about him in just a second, actually, because it is a really fascinating species. Species. Now where are we off to next? Now here's a red line Quaker, again another brown species but that is a really common thing at this time of year. These moths need to blend in and here's the perfect moth that blends in. If you imagine leaves all over the floor underneath a tree turning orange, this moth if it was amongst them would be perfectly camouflaged. Absolutely great and here's another December moth right at the end there. So here's a closer look at the December moth. We can't help but have a closer look because it's so fluffy. It's fluffy because at this time of year it's cold and it needs to keep its flight muscles warm and that's why it's so fluffy. But a real highlight at this time of year. So as well as resident species, um, something even more incredible happens at this time of year. Moth migration. Yep, you heard it right. Moths actually migrate. And over the last few nights, the winds have been in a southerly direction. And that has brought some warm air up from Spain and even Africa. And that has brought some exotic moths with it. And just last night, I actually caught a few of those tropical species. Now, this is a white speck and it's a really exciting species for me. I don't see many of these at all through the course of a year. Um, it's a real true migrant that's probably come up through Spain, um, but it's one that's actually starting to colonize. And I think it's found on the Isles of Scilly these days. Now here's a real tiny moth. This is the Rusty Dot Pearl, uh, which is a great name, um, but sadly isn't a looker, but is another migrant species that turns up a lot during these autumn influxes of migrant moths. So a great one to see. And here's by far the highlight of last night. This is Palpita vitrealis, or the olive tree pearl. And apologies for the quality here. I didn't actually get a video shot of this. I had to take a picture, but I had to share it with you because this is a real tropical looking species and comes all the way from the Southern Mediterranean where there's lots and lots of olive trees, but an absolutely cracking moth from the trap last night. So even though I am in England, I'm in lockdown, um, but you know, it's absolutely great to still be catching some moths and getting lots of enjoyment out of them. I still love getting up in the mornings, even though it's really cold now, and delving into that moth trap to see what I've caught. So I'll keep going over the next few weeks, and if I get anything good, um, we'll be sure to share it with you too. But um, who knows what you might find at home? Keep an eye out. If you were watching last week, you might remember that we were talking about hoopoos. One turned up locally, so I couldn't resist just popping down the road to take a look. Just behind me, just over my shoulder, is the hoopoo that I've been hoping to see all week. Now we had to wait very patiently to see this bird because it was pouring with rain this morning when we got here. So when the rain stopped, we had a little potter around outside. We looked for some prime hoopoo habitat, some nice short grass, a little bit of waste ground behind the cemetery here. But no, the hoopoo has decided that it must feed just under a defibrillator on the wall of a school on some tarmac. That is apparently where it's most enjoying itself and it has been there for the last 20 minutes or so. We're gonna try and show you now. And I think you went to see this one too, didn't you? I did. Uh, I didn't really get to see it properly because there was a hedge in the way and I'm quite short. So <laughs> there's a lot of, uh, you know, 
being on tiptoes to watch it, but it's absolutely brilliant. It flew out into uh, a tree and uh, it was preening. Um, and you can see it's sort of a crown or crest, uh, absolutely stunning. You can get in touch with us at Nature's Home at rspb.org.uk and let us know if there's anything else you'd like us to cover in these videos. Thank you for watching.